To the Big Bang. Here we continue our exploration of the silver silver chloride electrode. In the previous video, we discussed some chemical and biomaterial considerations of polarizable and non polarizable electrodes. Here we explore an electrical model or representation of this electrode. An electrode represented here in blue with a gray cable usually comes in contact with a tissue which has been wetted with a gel. In our previous video, we discussed how the calculation of the electrode potential is done by adding the half-cell potential and the ohmic, the concentration, and the activity over potentials. These different aspects of the electrode system can be represented by different elements in a circuit model. Recall that the half-cell potential is a function of the electrode material, the metal ion concentration in solution, and the temperature. Meanwhile, the activity over potential depends on the conductance due to the activity energy barrier. It will be larger for polarizable electrodes and smaller for non-polarizable electrodes with a very good conductance. This is the simple model, a schematic, for the electrode potential. We start with the half-cell potential being represented by a single cell. In principle, there will be another half-cell potential at the interface between any two layers through the electrode skin interface. The resistor in parallel with the capacitor is RD. RD models a leak resistance represented by the activity over potential, which depends on the conductance of the activation energy barrier. In essence, this resistance models how easy the electron transfer is. The capacitor you see at the top models the capacitance of the double layer or the charge formation on both sides of the metal in electrolyte solution. This capacitance is represented by the concentration over potential. The final resistance, Rs, to the right, models the resistance or conductance in the electrolyte solution represented by the ohmic over potential. A good way to think of this resistance is actually to consider the effect of having the gel applied onto the tissue before electrode placement on the skin. The gel acts as an ionic buffer for the interface. This resistance will be higher between the electrode and the ionic layer if the skin is dry, that is, without the gel. Now that we have the electrode model, I mean the electrical model, we have um, we can compute the model impedance. So first, we need to kill the source, that is, kill the half-cell potential. Then we can find the electrode using the tools we discussed in earlier videos. The RD and the CD are in parallel, while the RS is in series with RD and CD. The final electrode impedance is RD over 1 plus J omega times RD times CD. Then all of that is added to RS. This impedance would mean that at low frequencies, the impedance simplifies to Rs plus Rd. And then at high frequencies, this impedance simplifies to Rs. We can also show this graphically using tools we learned in earlier videos. As the frequency increases, you see that the impedance will drop from Rs plus Rd to simply Rs. I hope this has been helpful to further clarify the workings of a biopotential electrode used often in bioengineering applications. Good luck on your studies and I will see you next time.